Hello everyone, how are you today, this beautiful day that the Lord has made? I'm Karen Jane Casey on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. Every Monday we have Hope, Faith and Hope Journey, where we share our struggles that we go through, usually involving people and hard circumstances or situations. We look to the Lord for, for healing, for rescue and deliverance through Jesus. Every Wednesday, we have Sword of the Spirit, and that's where we share the Word of God, because it is God-breathed, inspired by God. And this is where we learn about God's promises and how to develop a relationship with Him. The Word of God is an effective weapon against our enemies. The Word is where we learn the good news of Jesus and our internal life. Well, I believe that the Lord assigned me as a believer to be a beacon of hope, in the storms, imagine a lighthouse that receives its light from the ultimate source, the Creator. And then, as a believer, we share that light in hopes to help and encourage others towards God's kingdom. I often share pieces of my testimony because He has rescued me time and time again. If He would hear my sincere, contrite cry out for Him to help me, then He would certainly do it for you. Many times, my testimony includes a cautionary tale, sharing my own mistakes, my sins, and my consequences along my faith journey. This can be used as both a warning and an encouragement to you. Whatever has happened, whatever part you played in it, today is the day to turn to God. Well, today's topic is no self-control. This is likely a topic we can all resonate with to some degree. For instance, one person may not have a propensity or weakness for sugar or desserts packed with sugar, so self-control is easy for them. Another person, however, may have a strong weakness in that area, and they might struggle constantly with excessive indulgence of sugar and desserts. (laughs) Knowing it can affect their health doesn't really help them with their lack of self-control. In fact, knowing it is not good for them may add to their shame and guilt for their problem. I confess I used that as an example because I had a struggle in that area. Well, I still have a struggle in that area. It seems unfair that as the years go by, I get shorter and shorter with a metabolism of energy level decreasing as I grow older, and yet There's more yummy foods and drinks out there with excessive sugar in them. That's not good for anyone. Temptations abound. Concealed sugar is in everything. We have to be so careful. Anyway, in 21, 22, 2021, and 2022, I suffered severe neck pain in my neck. And while I was in that state, I seriously craved comfort foods carbs, and sugars. It was as if my pain translated to starvation in my mind for those things that were bad for me. And I ate, and I ate, and I ate. And at almost the last minute, facing obesity and diabetes, I came to my senses. In faith, I cried out to the Lord, What happened next? The Lord helped me with my pain and with my cravings. He healed my neck, and I learned so much while suffering that nerve pain. And that miraculous story is shared with you in my nonfiction, Joy in the Valley, by Karen Jane Casey. However, it took me many months or weeks, months of weeks and self-control to lose 30 pounds and get back into health. And I struggle with it now to maintain that that weight. It's just one of many things that we each struggle to gain self-control over. Another area I lack self-control with is anger management. I have a percentage of Irish in me, and I can remember the excuses being said by grown-ups as I grew up. I can't control my temper. Irish is in my blood. What was that all about? A cop-out for not maintaining control over our emotions. And even, you know, I still struggle with anger management. 
when I went to do this podcast. I thought I was going to use my new computer with a better camera. No. <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't get rid of this one. But things happen continually. We need to have strong self-control. And we're going to talk about how that can happen. I've heard that a person coming from a long line of alcoholics, for instance, in a family will have a higher propensity in their genes toward alcoholism. It is it impossible to have self-control. Haven't we heard it said, or things like this, I can't help it. The urge is too strong. God made me this way. He gave me this addiction or weakness. The devil made me do it. It's a bad habit passed down from generation to generation in my family. I'm helpless to overcome it. Well, for one thing, those are very negative things, and I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. These are all excuses we'd love to use as crutches. But we know, as human beings, we were created with free will. Each and every one of us has free will. We make our own decisions. We make our own mistakes. Sometimes these decisions are based upon lies, misinformation, neediness, weakness, or fear. But still, self-control is within our reach. We decide to use it and mature in it or not. What does the Word of God say about it? Well, let's go to Proverbs 25, verse 28 in the Amplified Version. Like a city that is broken down and without walls, leaving it unprotected, is a man who has no self-control over his spirit and sets himself up for trouble. Well, I don't want to leave myself unprotected. I don't want to set myself up for trouble. How about you? What does it take to develop self-control if, you, if you're certain that you don't have it? Did you know that you receive salvation through Jesus, a hope for eternity, with Him when you repent, believe, and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? The truth is in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then in John 14, 6, Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. So in that, in itself, is the most important decision of our life. But also a believer, a follower of Jesus, receives the fruit of the Spirit. What does that entail? In Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23, if this is what we receive once we become a follower of Jesus. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while we wait, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Well, I've heard evangelists essentially say that love is in each of the fruit of the Spirit and self-control is what holds it all together. So, without love, how can we be patient, kind, and joyful, and, and faithful, and, and good? And without self-control, how can we maintain these things? Patience is a good one to look at. Well, if you're a believer in Christ, then you do have self-control. It may not be developed, though. That happens when we use it, when we stretch ourselves into it. And Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14, explains this. So, as God's own chosen people, who are holy, set apart, sanctified for His purpose, and well-beloved by God Himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness that comes with good temper, bearing graciously with one another and willingly forgiving each other that one has caused complaint against each other. 
Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourselves in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity, for everything is bond together in agreement with each of these that seeks the best for others. Hmm. Well, that takes away a multitude of excuses from our, for our behavior, for our attitude. And as I studied self-control from a biblical perspective, I found it associated with these things. Slowness to anger. Kindness. A kind response versus a hasty reaction. Living a disciplined life. Waiting patiently. Steadfast faith and love. Endurance. Walking in love. Being humble versus being haughty or prideful. Whew. Even thinking about that. I kind of had a little bit of a hasty reaction when I realized the new computer was not going to be working well for me on this podcast. We have to watch out for it always. And repent and move forward knowing that We have to stretch ourselves to maintain that self-control. Well, here's a scripture that I hope we can each reiterate as an affirmation as we conquer our lack of self-control. And and in that, I mean, translate it to yourself like um, God is love of all his children. God loves me because I am his child. And a child of God is a follower of Jesus. Well, anyway, here's 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 7. For this very reason, applying your diligence to the divine promises, make every effort in exercising your faith to develop moral excellence and immoral excellence, knowledge, insight, understanding, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, steadfastness, and your steadfastness, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly affection, and in your brotherly, brotherly affection, develop Christian love, That is to learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do things for their benefit. So that one, I I picked a big one there, and, and it's a little more complicated than in the Amplified Version. But I can say, because of Jesus, I have self control. And in my self control, I can be steadfast godly and have brotherly affection for others i can enjoy the fruit of the spirit because they are put together with my self-control and love well i hope this was helpful for you if you know that you need to exercise self-control and that you need help in it i hope you will turn to god about it after all god is our refuge a very present help in times of trouble and i turn to him Regarding my um, craving for sugar, I turn to him about each and every little thing because you know what? He is well able to handle big problems and what you consider small and insignificant, he is able to handle those too. Well able to and wants to because he loves us. He knows every hair on our head. There's nothing too insignificant in our lives for him to help you with. Turn to God about it and declare, with God's guidance, with God's guidance, I do have self-control. And then stretch it, use it, practice it. And when you fail, get right back up and keep your self-control. Well, I thank you for joining me today on Turn to God with Karen. I hope that you'll watch or listen to Monday episodes of Faith and Hope Journey, as well as episodes on Wednesday, Sword of the Spirit. You can share your suggestions and comments at the contact page on my website, karenjanecasey.com. And when you go there, you'll see my books, blogs, and resource material. All of my books by Karen Jane Casey are geared towards bringing you hope, encouragement, and healing through your challenges, the storms that you face. The four-book fiction series is Standing Through Storms, and the two-book and study guide in the nonfiction series is Hope and Faith Journey. 
If any of my books or any of my podcast episodes have brought you toward hope, healing, or encouraged you in any way, especially if you have turned to Jesus as a follower, please let me know. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Blessings to you.